okay today. We're here to share with you the gospel today about the Lord Jesus Christ. today it says but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea there was a mighty tempest in the sea the sea so the ship was like to be broken then the mariners were afraid and cried everyone unto his God and cast forth the wares where the ship is into the sea to lighten it of them but Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep and they said everyone to his fellow come let us cast lots that we may know for who caused this evil is upon us so they cast lots and the lot fell upon Jonah then they said unto him tell us we pray thee for whose cause this evil is upon us what is thine occupation and whence comest thou what is thy country and he said unto them I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord the God of heaven which have made the sea and dry land. Then the, the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. And then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm? And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So Jonah went away from God. Jonah ran away from God, but God got him to be swallowed by a whale. And when we run away from God, when we try to run away from God, God knows how to corner us. God knows how to get hold of us. But God got hold of Jonah. Jonah could not escape the clutches of God because God had him in the belly of the whale. Sometimes God allows tragedy, God allows problems in our lives to call us back to Him. He allows those problems sometimes to call us back to Him so that we come back to Him and we realize that we need Him. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the belly's fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord and He heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardst my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the sea, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves pass over me. And Jonah cried out to God. Jonah cried out to God. He cried out to God. He cried out to God and said, God, help me in the midst of this difficulty. Help me in the midst of this problem. And Jonah cried out to God. And you know, if we cry out to God and say, God, have mercy upon me. God, show me mercy. Cry out to God and God will meet your need. God will be there for you. God will meet your need. But God will come and deal with you. And he cried out to God. He realized his sin. He realized his sin. He realized that he was a sinner and that he needed God. He cried out to God. You and I need to cry out to God in the time of difficulty. To turn to him when you need him and he will come to you when you cry out to him. And Jonah cried out to God. That's what you need to do today. There is a God over the universe. A God who is over Cheetah Mill. A God who is mighty. A God who is powerful. A God who is glorious. He is a great God and a mighty God. And you need to cry out to Him. And say, God, I want to know you. God, forgive me. God, cleanse me. God, have mercy upon me. And He'll forgive you. He'll cleanse you. And He'll wash you. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again towards thy holy temple. The waters comfort me about, even to the soul. The debt closed me around about, and the weeds were wrapped about my head. 
He come to realize his desperate need. He come to realize his desperate need. Jonah was desperate for God. He come to realize how desperate he was. In John, in Romans chapter one, it says, "All fall short of the glory of God." It says in, in Luke chapter 15 that the prodigal son realized he was eating the pigs of the pots. And then he realized what a fool he'd made of himself. And Jonah realized what a fool he'd made of himself and he cried out to God. And that's what you and I need to do today. Cry out to him for forgiveness. Cry out to him for cleansing. Cry out to him for washing and washing of the the blood of the Lamb. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came unto him, thee, in thy holy temple. He remembered the Lord, and he cried out to him. And he remembered the holy temple where they sacrificed, where they sacrificed lambs, where they sacrificed. And he remembered the holy temple. And Jesus says that he is the temple, that he took over the temple. He said, take this temple down and in three days I'll build it. He is the temple of the Lord. And that temple came and died on that cross. And when he died on that cross, he shed his blood that you may be redeemed, that you may be forgiven. That is the temple of the Lord. That is the one that died on that cross. And he died on that cross and shed his blood. And if you cry out to God through the blood of the Lamb, He will hear you. He will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will restore you. As you go to the Lamb of God, God bless you. As you go to the blood of Jesus, as you go to Him, the blood of Jesus, you'll be forgiven, restored, and cleansed. God bless you, sir. God bless you. You'll be forgiven, restored, and cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. In the blood of Jesus, You'll be forgiven and restored in Him. So if you cry out to Him, He will hear you. When my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord. When my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord. When I, when I was a drunkard, I remember the Lord. When I was on drugs, I remember the Lord. When I was violent, I remember the Lord. When I was a snobby intellectual, I remember the Lord. He remembered the Lord, my friends. He remembered the Lord, and he came to the Lord that is a God to know, that is a God to have a relationship with, that is a God to worship, a God to praise, a God to live for, a God to bring glory in your life, to bring glory to God, to live for God, to worship God. And there he died on that cross and made a way for you on that cross. He made a way for you on that cross. He made a way on the cross by dying on that cross and shedding his blood for you that's why he died on that cross and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying sorry and the Lord spoke unto the fish and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land and it vomited out Jonah on the dry land the whale coughed up Jonah and vomited him out of the dry land, of the dry land. The whale puffed up Jonah and vomited him out onto the dry land. When God tells you you're forgiven, you're forgiven. And in the word of God it says, no condemnation to them that are in Christ. No condemnation to them that are in Christ. No condemnation to them that are in Christ. And when God tells you you're forgiven, you're forgiven. When God tells you you're forgiven, you're forgiven. There is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And if you forgive, if He forgives you, He forgives you. And He says there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Oh, to be washed in the blood, to be clean in the blood, to be right in the blood to know that you're going to heaven, to know that you're going to glory, to know that you're washed and forgiven and restored. Oh, there is now no condemnation 
Today I'm gathered in Christ. God bless you, sir. Have a lovely day, sir. There is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. No condemnation, my friend. No condemnation to them that are in Christ. To them that are clean. To them that are, the blood washes them. There is now no condemnation. What a glorious truth. That you can be washed and forgiven in the blood of the Lamb. That Christ died on that cross to bring you right with God. To, that you may be restored in God. There is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. Oh, to walk the walk in the presence of God. To walk in the presence of God. And to know that your soul is clean. And to know that you're washed in the blood of the Lamb. And restored in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. No condemnation, no judgment, no judgment upon your conscience. Because the blood was shed on that cross for you. And when God tells you you're forgiven, you're forgiven. And God told Jonah, he vomited Jonah, and Jonah went and landed on land. But God had told him, when he did that, that he had forgiven him. There is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. And if we trust them, we're forgiven, we're cleansed, we're washed in the blood of the Lamb. We're restored in the blood of the Lamb. We're clean in the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb, it's the blood of the Lamb where we're saved. The blood of the Lamb that we're forgiven by. God bless you. Have a lovely day. The blood of Jesus cleanses us. The blood of Jesus washes us. The blood of Jesus forgives us. The blood of Jesus sets us free. The blood of Jesus cleanses us. The blood of Jesus washes us. The blood of Jesus brings hope and salvation to us. It's the blood of Jesus, my friends. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ washes you. The blood of Christ cleanses you. The blood of Christ makes you anew. The blood of Christ sets you free. The blood of Christ is powerful. The blood of Christ is over death. The blood of Christ is over your sin. The blood of Christ is power. It's power to save you. Power to change you. Power to make you anew. The blood of Christ, my friends. Oh, come to that blood today. Come to the blood of Christ. Come to the blood and be cleansed. Come to the blood of the Lamb and know that your sins are forgiven. Come to the blood and know that you're right with God. That you're forgiven and cleansed and washed in the blood of the Lamb. God bless you, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. okay, so this is private. Is that private? Uh, you can stay here. Yes? This is not my God. It was not so I can stand here. Yeah, you stand here. I have no idea. Right, God here. bless you. Have a nice yeah, day. Yeah. No God bless you. Yeah.
And Jonah went to Nineveh to preach repentance. Repentance means we turn away from our old life, we turn away from that which is wrong. It says in the word of God, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. It says, Do not take the Lord's name in vain. It says, Do not take the Lord's name in vain. It says, Don't steal, don't commit adultery, don't lie, don't honor your mother and father, honor the Sabbath day. And these are the ten commandments of the Lord, and we break them, and we become exceedingly sinful, and a sinful generation rejecting the power and the mercy and love of God. But God's love is here today. God bless you, Lord. But God's love is here. God's love is here. God's love is here. The love of God is here, my friend. The love of God. Take my yoke 
upon me and learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light and he says come 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 to my love come to my kingdom come into it i want you come drink of eternal life come and have eternal life in your life but you say no i don't want it you're the bible pastor i don't want it but he says come come i died for you i shed my blood for you i give my life for you on that cross and he gave his life for you on that cross and adore him, the Messiah who deserves to be praised and worshipped today. Oh, come. Come and trust him today. Come and believe in him today. He has power to forgive you, power to change you, and power to make you anew today. He is the Son of God, the mighty King of me. And that is joy forevermore. That is joy forevermore that is known. That is joy Him, joy as we adore him and joy upon joy upon joy in heaven all oh, to enjoy him all oh, to praise him all oh, to adore him all oh, to glorify him the love of God who shed his blood for you the love of God that gave his life for you come and drink of him today you said Jay I don't want no Bible bashing today listen let us God to worship today a God to adore today, a mighty God today, a God on the throne, a God is all powerful, a God you can know today through the blood of the Lamb, through the blood of Jesus, through the blood of Christ the Savior, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the blood of the Lamb today. His blood can save you, His blood can set you free today. Well, you've got to turn to Him today and trust him but let him knock on your heart i can't knock on your heart but let the savior knock on your heart let him knock on your heart he says i am the good shepherd let him knock on it open your heart to him when he knocks i am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep he knocks on your heart he knocks on your heart and he cries to you today, let me in. Let me into your heart. You've been going on on your own. You've been struggling on your own. You've been carrying your own burdens, but I want to come, says the Lord. I want to come and forgive you. I want to come and destroy you. I want to come and cleanse you. I want to come and wash you. I want to come and make you anew. That's what he says today. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He is a good shepherd today. He is a good shepherd who can save you today. A good shepherd who can make you anew today. A good shepherd who can give you life today. God bless you, sir. A good shepherd today who can give you life and peace and hope and joy today in the Holy Spirit. He can make you alive today and set you free. God bless you today. 
Trust Him today. Look to Him today. Have faith in Him today. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Folks, this is Jay. Richie Abel preaching the gospel. The Lamb of God is the Savior, and we're preaching that gospel today. So I'm encouraging you to get out. Get out in all the towns and cities and villages. Take a cross, take a table, take some literature, take a team. Open a, 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 a course at your church and put a meal on for people and reach out to the lost. But remember that when you're reaching out and people get saved, you need to teach them the Word of God. Don't compromise, but teach the Word of God and be true to the Word of God. It says, Paul says, preach the Word in season and out of season. Rebuke and exhort. Don't compromise. Don't sprinkle a little bit of secularism in your Bible teaching. No. Pure Word of God. Pure spirit of Word of God. Don't mix it with modernism, postmodernism, secularism, or whatever it is. But teach that Word in all its purity and all its simplicity, and it has power to change lives. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Pray for me. Pray for the people that help me. I'm on my own today, but normally there are people that do come out with me. Pray for us. Pray for our fellowship. Pray for the people that help me from other churches. And, and, and get out yourself. Whether it be in Australia or America, whether it be in China, whether it be in Africa or Asia, wherever it is, South America, wherever God has put you, get out, reach out, spread the gospel. Today I've been in Cheetah Mill. Cheetah Mill is a tough place. There's a mosque up there, there's a mosque down there. There's, it, it, it's a Muslim, full of Muslims everywhere. There's uh, synagogues up there. The churches that are near here are quite far away, down further down in Cheetah Mill. And there aren't many of the churches. There aren't many churches. So it's a needy area, and this is what we're seeing everywhere. Wherever we go, we're seeing a, a need for church planting a need for people to get out in these areas and spread the gospel. I spread it in today, I preached it boldly, and I sent the seed out, and I'm going to be giving literature out, and, and I'm trusting that God will bless, and I'm encouraging you to get out, reach out, share the word of God, share the gospel, and have a lovely day.